Good morning. It's Witness Wednesday. <clears throat> I've got something to share with you. So exciting. I'm gonna hit hit a little below the belt today. No silly, I mean your pockets. So one morning, just before I opened my eyes, I I was awake, but my eyes hadn't opened yet. And the Lord was standing beside me. And this is what he said. Come to me, ye who are weary and heavy laden. And in exchange, I will give you rest. And my eyeballs flew open and I thought, I have never read the Bible like that. <laughs> he was so excited to tell me in exchange for my weariness and feeling heavy laden and burdened that he was going to give me rest. And at that moment, I knew that was the kingdom exchange. And uh, actually, that's what I named my ministry, the kingdom exchange, because that's the whole purpose of God's kingdom is to exchange <clears throat> whatever is not supposed to be our portion for what is supposed to be our portion for everybody. It comes through relationship with Jesus. So I want to talk to you a little bit about tithing. It's for, you know, Christians. And especially if you've been tithing a long time and you feel like uh, you haven't had a return on your obedience. I was reading in the Old Testament a story about a widow who, whose husband had worked for the prophet, and he had died, and she had a son, and they had nothing um, for whatever reason. And she had just a little bit of flour, a little bit of oil, and she was going to make a couple of cakes for herself and her son. They were going to eat, and then they were going to die. Um, and, you know, some of you guys know about me. I was actually widowed um, 10 years ago. And uh, I remember being in the kitchen one day, and the Lord said to me, What do you think is luxury? And I said, Hmm, what do I think is luxury? And I said to the Lord, I think luxury is being able to go to the grocery store and buy anything I want without having to count up, you know, or put things back. Because that's the place I was. And he said, that's not luxury. And I'm like, oh, okay, so let me think of what is luxury. And I said, well, you know, I think a $2,000 vacation is a luxury. And within three days, a friend of mine called and said, Crystal, just clear your calendar for this weekend. I've already paid for it. You, you know, you, you can't refuse me because I've already paid. And I have um, some CE I have to do for my license. And I, you know, my husband doesn't want to go. And it's at this luxury resort. And guess what? It was, it was a two thousand dollar vacation. And uh, if the Lord hadn't already had that discussion with me in the kitchen, I would have turned her down. But I went. And while she was all day in CE. <laughs> I was doing things like having massages and, you know, the Lord was blessing me through my friend. So back to the widow. She's got enough flour and oil. She's decided uh, the only thing I can do is make these two cakes for me and my son and we're going to eat it and then we're going to die. Then guess what? Preacher comes on the TV. Now, you know, that's not Old Testament. Preacher comes on the TV and says, hey, we need your finances. <laughs> no, the prophet comes to town and says, you know, I need something to eat. She said, I only have enough flour and oil to make a couple of cakes for me and my son. We're going to eat it and die. And you know what that prophet says. He said, make those cakes. And give it to me first. How dare he, right? But he knew. It's what I learned from the Lord. He knew. So she made the cakes and she gave it to him. He said, Now I want you to go to all your neighbors and get their empty jars and bring those jars back. 
and she went to several neighbors and she got those jars she brought those jars back he said now take your oil and pour it into all those jars and as many jars as she had she filled that is the kingdom exchange once she took that oil and cake and changed it from this kingdom on earth to that kingdom in heaven through the prophet, what she had was able to have the increase. Isn't that so exciting? So when you take your tithe, that is one you know, tenth of your income, and you exchange it from this kingdom to God's kingdom, now what you have will go further. <clears throat> now, you know, if you've been in church much, You've heard that good old sermon in Malachi that says, Will you rob God? Will a man rob God? And that's what God himself said. He said, Will you rob me? Now, what is he saying? He said, Bring the tenth of your income into the storehouse that my people may have food to eat. And I will protect you from the devourer. I will protect your stuff from being eaten up. I'll protect your fruit from being cast too early that you won't have a harvest. And test me on this. Can you believe God said test him? He did. Let's pass that test. But I have a thought I want to share. You know, everything is already God's. So how are we robbing him? We are robbing him of the opportunity to bless us. Because the other part of that same passage says, And I will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out on you blessings. And that might come in the form of dreams and visions and ideas that actually can be benefiting you and, and the community. I'll tell you, my nephew years ago hydroplaned while he was driving in a a Corvette, which is not a car that's going to give you a lot of protection. So as I thought through the tire design that I thought would have prevented that, um, I, I literally did do what Einstein calls a thought experiment. And I thought through a tread on a tire that would prevent hydroplaning. And of course, at the time, I was just a housewife, a mother of three sons, not in the research and development for good rich tire or anything, but um, I got to the end of that thought and I thought, well, yeah, that looks like it would work. Well, I didn't reach out to anybody, but two years later, I see a commercial on TV for guess what? Vector tires, which was the exact design that I had conceived in my mind that I thought would prevent or great, greatly limit hydroplaning. And that's exactly what vector tires do. So I want to I want to challenge you with two things. Uh, number one, there's some wrong thought out there that uh, God's children should not have any money <laughs> because you might go you know shoot up or do something to kill yourself. But you know that is true, right? But if you have a relationship, a close relationship with the Lord, would you do that? I don't think so. But could you maybe sponsor somebody for an intervention if you did have money? Yes, you could. You could help people. So Deuteronomy 8.18 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for it's he who gives the ability to produce wealth. Wealth is a lot of money. <laughs> for the purpose of establishing his covenant. And then again, if you think, well, Jesus had nothing to say about this. This is Old Testament. Tithing is just Old Testament. It's in that old book of Malachi or Malachi or whatever. Um, take a look at Matthew 23, 23. It's in red. And what a beautiful sunrise. Oh, my goodness. I just see the works of the Lord ahead of me. You want to take a peek? Look. Beautiful, beautiful pinks and purples. So, Matthew 23, 23. 
Jesus is talking to the religious leaders. He said, you tithe. You even bring a tenth of your herbs, right? I mean, that's, that's pretty, pretty strict and regimented. I'm going to even take a tenth of my mint and my basil and my rosemary. He said, that's good, but you forget the greater things. And that is to love with the love of God. To give mercy to others, because boy, don't we want mercy for ourselves. And to live a life of integrity. So Jesus did address tithing. He said, tithing is good, but don't forget the greater things. And that is to love, to give mercy, and to live with integrity. So as you consider your tithe, I want you to look at it from a new point of view. You are with your tenth of your income. You are releasing it into the kingdom of God. Okay, so I'm going to take a moment. So let's see. Let's see something. Okay, right here, mailbox. All right, so right now I'm in the kingdom of heaven. I'm living with the Lord. And then right here, I'm stepping over. I'm, I'm now in the kingdom of earth. All you have to do to exchange kingdoms is take that step over, right? So take your tithe with the purpose and intent and relationship with Jesus to exchange kingdoms for all of your money. And when you give, whether it's today, Friday, Sunday, when you give your tithe, you give with expectation that you have exchanged kingdoms like that widow woman who gave her cakes. Well, it was the cake and the oil, right? To, the, to that nasty old preacher who said, give me your last little dime, right? That's, that's how we judge men. But let's repent for judging preachers who get it, okay? Maybe they haven't taught it right. Maybe you haven't understood it right. But when you give your... <laughs> I gave widows might for, for years. Um, when you give your, your tenth and you exchange kingdoms, look for what God is going to tell you. So if it's vector tires, girl, or guy write it down and get in, get in touch with the research and development with Goodrich Tires or Continental or somebody um, and just look for what the Lord will do to you. Um, you know, there's chatter in, in the Christian community about, um, let's see, what's it called? Uh, wealth transfer. <laughs> I think Jeff Bezos got an idea of what wealth transfer is. <laughs> Everybody transfer. And you have to. You've ordered from Amazon. You transferred your wealth right into Jeff Bezos' hands and then you criticize him because he's got all this money and he's not helping people. But no, I want you to have God's heart and through your relationship with Jesus Christ, ask him, what are you telling me today? What am I getting from your windows of heaven? What are you pouring out? And then write it down and pursue it. So right now I have two things in the pipeline myself, which are going to provide for me as well as my job, right? So I've got to execute, execute, execute. But I want to encourage you to look at 1 Kings 17, also another story about a prophet and a widow and cakes. Um, and remember that we have to live in this earthly realm, but at the same time we live in the Kingdom Exchange. That's the name of my ministry. And if you want to look up on Facebook, Kingdom Exchange Connect Group, you can connect with me there. And I can't wait till next week because I'm going to share how, how Jesus took those five little loaves and two little fish and fed 5,000 people. You guys have a blessed day. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. And um, have a great week. Bye-bye.